This is exactly right. Really quick announcement before we start the mini-sode. We're having some big changes to the website and to the fan cult. So if you are a fan cult member, keep an eye uh, on your inbox for updates and important information over the next coming days. And for everyone, we have a big, exciting, special announcement that we're going to be uh, letting you know about on Instagram Live. So be sure to follow us. So that'll be on Wednesday on Halloween at 8.30 Pacific Time. Check it out. Instagram, my favorite murder. Goodbye. Welcome. This is my favorite murder. The mini-sode. This is a special spooky Halloween. Spooky Halloween. That's that, my friend Patty Riley, who I lived in the haunted house with, mm-hmm. for some reason, and I think it was because there was like a card somebody got sent, mm-hmm. but we used to say that to each other, spooky Halloween, <laughs> instead of happy Halloween. Oh. That was, Hello. That was, <laughs> spooky Halloween. Spooky Halloween, everybody. Okay, we're reading you your scary stuff ghost stories guys you knocked it out of way the park. to go i'm terrified are you ready yes okay this first one i'm going to i'm going to censor the subject line okay so i'm just going to tell you that the subject line is trick or treat okay but that's not the whole one okay dear mfm team i love it i love that official borderline <laughs> military feel to that <laughs> greeting a uh, longtime listener, love the show, love your pets, and I love the community. After listening to George's Halloween story last week, I had to share my favorite memory of taint of a tainted Halloween tree. I grew up in Canton, Ohio, which is a working class town about an hour south of Cleveland. We're famous for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Oh. Who cares? <laughs> for, and for showing up on lists like Worst American Cities to Live In oh, and no. Most Dangerous Small Cities. Oh, my God. Love it. Okay, to set the scene, it's 1991, I'm nine years old, and I'm trick-or-treating with my six-year-old brother in the nicer part of our neighborhood. We walk up to our aunt's house and get our candy. Mom tells us to go to the next few houses, and she'll catch up as she finishes talking to my aunt. Uh, she finishes her shibli. Yep, and her her big, long Benson and Hedges lights 100. That's right. Thrilled with this newfound trick-or-treat freedom, Ugh. we head off. However, we quickly realize there's a problem. We look up the walkway to the next house mm-hmm. and we see the neighbor, picture Bob from Twin Peaks. Oh no. Uh huh. Sitting on the front stairs. He looks scary, but it's free candy, right? Right. Um, my little brother and I look at each other in horror as Bob reaches his <gasps> grimy hand into a large bag of potato chips what? and proceeds <laughs> to no. place handfuls of loose <laughs> potato chips into the trick or treater candy bag. Oh my God. That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> we freeze because we're supposed to be polite and take the nice man's potato chips, right? <laughs> Wrong. We turned around and hightailed it the fuck out of there. This psycho is giving children handfuls of loose potato chips. Oh Run. God. To this day, my little brother and I dissolved into a pile of giggles at the thought of that creep oh and his God. loose potato <laughs> chips. Were, were the chips plan A? Did he run out of candy and turn to what he considered the next best option? Were the chips plan A? <laughs> Was he just trolling the neighborhood? We'll never know. Oh. SSDGM and ha- and happy Halloween, Christina. <laughs> that's a, that's great. <laughs> Loose potato chips. Loose potato chips in a trick or treat bag. Just sullying all the candy you have so far. Just ruin, ruining it. Okay, this is called some spooky shit for Halloween, and then it uh, sidebar cats know. Oh, that's right, Elvis. Yes, Elvis. Um, hi guys and gals. No, hi guy and gals. Oh, Steven. I, I thought now that it's almost Halloween, it would be a good time for me to write in about my spooky paranormal experience. Mm-hmm. I grew up in a small town in Colorado in a house that was super far away from other houses, and it was unanimously agreed uh, was haunted as hell. All of the spooky was reported happening in the same room, the TV room in the basement, of course. Uh-huh. The stories mostly happened during parties with my friends hearing fucked up things or people acting weird in the wee hours of the morning. Except one time when a hippie lady stayed with us 
down there and told us she heard things screaming in the walls, which we decided to blame on raccoons and move on. <laughs> <laughs> They're a good catch all, those mm-hmm. raccoons. Raccoons. Goodbye. My personal experience happened when I was, I was about 17. My parents were out of town and decided to leave me in the enormous haunted house alone. My dad was allergic to cats, so they had to stay outside in our garage, but I was spooked, so I brought the homies inside. That's fucking right. (laughs) That's right. When uh, We went downstairs. Because they're really going to help you when you get killed. (laughs) Cats milling around as you're murdered. (laughs) I'm just like so sad at the idea of a fucking garage full of cats. (laughs) Just like nothing as a cat person (laughs) makes me more sad. No. Um, Homies inside. We went downstairs to watch some TV and I settled into the couch facing the TV with my back to the majority of the room. One of my cats, Mm -hmm. one of my cats, Tito, was on my lap and uncharacteristically really on edge. He kept jolting up and staring over my shoulder at the same corner. Mm -hmm. I would turn around and look where he was looking. And of course, nothing was there, but he would just but he would just stare. He did this several times. He would go from purring and drooling in my lap to high alert with all his hair on end and staring at the same fucking corner over Mm -mm. my shoulder. Mm -mm. Then suddenly he hissed and bolted out of the room. I decided not today, Satan, and booked it upstairs (laughs) to my room where he was waiting for me on my bed, acting like nothing happened. So I got in bed and finally calmed down enough to fall asleep. The next thing I knew, I had opened my eyes and my nose was an inch away from a wall. As I started to come to, I realized where I was. That's right. I fucking slept walked to the corner in the basement. <gasps> I freaked oh, out. And sp- I'm freaking out. Uh-huh. And sprinted upstairs and launched in my bed. I checked my phone. And it was roughly 3.03 a.m. In, in the morning, meaning that I must have been in the corner almost exactly at 3 a.m. No! Mm-hmm. The witching hour! Uh-huh. Is it? I mean, yeah. Uh, nothing like that has ever <laughs> happened to me since, and we are now selling the home. My mom used to tell my sister and I that the spirits have watched us grow up, and so aren't a threat to us, but might be mad about something else. But still, fuck that corner. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the awesome podcast. Stay sexy and trust your cat, Taylor. And then next to Taylor in parentheses, it says, girl. Girl. <laughs> Taylor, girl. Girl. Taylor's a female. Taylor, girl. Taylor, girl. That's a good story. That's right. <laughs> Trust oh your cats. God, that's upsetting. To fucking sleepwalk and then wake up in the basement in a corner. Mm-mm. That's in the bad corner. Like if I woke up and I had sleepwalked to the pod loft, which is a relatively like spirit free safe place, mm-hmm. I would be freaked out. Oh yeah, no, no, no. There's no good place that you could no. be like. You could sleepwalk to the freezer where all the ice cream is and yeah. still be freaking the fuck out. Right, but to the fucking corner where your cat was to kissing the, at, to the Blair Witch corner uh-huh. where the bad children go exactly right before they're murdered. Exactly. Are you fucking at three 4 a.m. That's right. Yay! Spooky Halloween, Taylor. Spooky Halloween! Okay, this next one is subject line, uh, My Crazy Neighbor, A Halloween Tale. Okay. Hello, MFM family. A while back, you asked for crazy neighbor stories. Did we? <laughs> I bet we did, and I love it. I'm, I'm proud of the past. Yes. Us. Uh, <laughs> I don't Please remember the past. do us. it. I love it. And with Halloween coming up, I figured I'd send this one in. I grew up in a small Pennsylvania town in a quiet neighborhood. There was never a lot going on, so we had, um, we had to do what we could to entertain ourselves. For my neighbor's catty corner from us, this meant getting really into the holidays, especially Halloween. Think haunted house in their garage, nice. crazy long decor blasting the theme from Halloween as soon as the sun started to go down. <laughs> um, quite frankly, it was amazing. Okay, now I'm sorry to sidebar this already, but I, th- I told you and Vince this when we were on tour, but the last time we recorded in the pod loft at Georgia's house, I went when we were done, and we're always done at like 11, mm-hmm. 10.30, I went down to my car that was parked in her garage. Oh, yeah. And somebody was sitting in their car in the garage. In the creepy ass garage of my house. Like my apartment building has a fucking creepy like 80s Japanese horror movie garage. Yes. It's very, uh, it just seems like somewhere a bad thing would happen. Somebody was sitting in their car blasting the theme to Halloween. (laughs) That's so fucked up. Um, So it was, I could tell if you were sitting in the car, it would be making your ears bleed. But outside the car, it was just plain loud. Oh my God, who? And at first I was like, ha ha, it's October and somebody's. And then as I was get on my way to the car, I wanted to get into the car so bad. And my car unlocks automatically when mm-hmm. you approach it because I have the key. Yeah. <laughs> and I still was trying to open it with the key. Yeah. Because I was so freaked out by the time I got there because that music is so fucking, it's like, who would do that? It's yeah. just that it's bad da, da, keyboard. Da, 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 yes, da, 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 that Thank one, right? You. Yes. No, I'm doing Why am I having a flourish version. in it? Your version's perfect. Thank you. Okay. 
Anyway, that's my personal experience. Yes. <laughs> spooky Elvis. <laughs> Elvis is so spooky. Okay. And the, oh, they said about the neighbor's decorations, quite frankly, it was amazing. Uh-huh. One Halloween, when I was in high school, a group of friends and I were at my house preparing to go out trick-or-treating. And then in parentheses, too old? I think you're never too old to <laughs> score some free candy. That's right. There was a knock on the side door, so thinking it was a friend of mine or an appropriately aged trick-or-treater, I went to answer it. Standing on the other side of our glass storm door, silhouetted in the dark, mm. was a full-grown man dressed as Michael Myers. No. He didn't say a word. He just stood there brandishing a knife and staring at me. No. And yes, the Halloween theme was playing from across the street <laughs> Na- naturally i immediately gasped and ran away my friends all freaked out when i told them and then freaked out even more when mike showed up at the window <gasps> what a dick he didn't speak he just stood there we continued to run around the house only to have him appear at the <gasps> windows until we realized some time had passed and we had no idea where he had gone so after losing our shit for a while, one of my guy friends decided he was going to be macho and go, <laughs> macho was in um, parentheses uh-huh. or quotes and go see where this fucker had gone and went outside. He came back five minutes later with a weird look on his face and told us to follow him around the side of the house. Uh-uh. There we found my neighbor at the bottom of our stone cellar stairs, masked by his side, clutching his broken ankle. <laughs> He had fallen in (laughs) while trying to sneak around our house in the dark. Luckily, he wasn't more injured because he seriously could have broken his neck falling seven feet down the stairs to the bottom. That is not how I expected this to end. The knife ended up being fake, of course. Thank God. Or else that could have also ended really badly. Oh, my God. Needless to say, he ended up needing physical therapy and he never tried to scare us like that again. Stay sexy and maybe leave your neighbors alone, Alice. <laughs> what a fucking dick that's what you get you fucking grown man for trying to seriously? scare little kids seriously he fucking paid the price immediately he was running around trying to scare them and he fucking <laughs> just fell down seven fucking oh what a piece of shit i Isn't love that i love that so much oh I love that so much. Okay. So funny. Being an adult sucks. I mean, you know what would be really funny is if this new version of Halloween came out, the new Jamie Lee Curtis, which is yeah. apparently like breaking box office records and so huge and amazing. Yeah. But it would be funny if like that's the way they finally stop Michael Myers. Yeah, he trips. Yeah, they just do a little funny pit, uh, a trap yeah. pit for him. Yeah. What am I- or what if he, it's not on purpose though, he like trips over, like the neighbor <laughs> cat tries to like cuddle up with him and like twist up his legs and he falls and <laughs> starts crying yeah. he's like I hurt my uh, leg I hurt myself and I hurt other people yeah, I'm I don't sorry. want to hurt other people anymore I just wanted attention he like he walking through backyards you know there's that one great shot of him and he's like uh-huh. in between the sheets that are blowing in the wind yes and then he walks forward and it ch- chokes himself on <laughs> one of the uh, laundry lines it's caught up in the sheets oh, 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 I'm God. sorry it, I'm sorry I'm sorry okay this is called friendly ghost story Ooh. Chicago hi MFM fan Thank you so much for making Ghost Stories fair game for minisodes because I have been so excited to share this old ghost story that has been passed through generations of my family. Sweet. You people are the best. Okay, here it is. <laughs> so it was smack dab in the middle of the Great Depression in Chicago and my great grandpa was struggling, like everyone else, to provide food and shelter for his wife and several small children. One day he heard word that a local bank had a job available. He immediately dropped what he was doing and sprinted to the bank. But already a huge crowd of men had gathered who all wanted the job. And then it says in parentheses, what a messed up time (laughs) (laughs) it really was tell me about it no women uh couldn't work there okay he waited for hours but never made it to the front of the line and eventually the boss man from the bank announced that the job had been filled and they should all go home totally defeated my great grandpa went to the local pub sure and then it says good for you grandpa (laughs) as he is sitting drinking a beer a man sat down next to him at a bar he ordered a drink and they got to talking after several minutes of chatting the man out of the blue goes you should go back to the bank they have a job available My great-grandpa was like, no, I was just there, and they hired someone else. The man was like, nope, they have a job available. And my great-grandpa was like, no, they don't. This continues, and I guess my great-grandpa was pretty annoyed with the guy. Eventually, he was like, fine, whatever, I'll go back. He thought that the guy was completely bonkers, but something in him made him walk back to the bank. Like expected, when he got back, it was bank business as usual. There was... The There was no crowd and the posting for the job had been taken down. He was about to turn around and leave when the doors bank doors open and the bank boss man is ushering someone out. Then he pointed to my great grandpa and said, you here for the job? 
My great grandpa was in shock, but somehow pulled himself together enough to ace my, an interview and get hired. Oh. Turns out that the guy, the boss man was ushered outside was the one they, who they had originally hired, but something didn't work out. As soon as my great grandpa was done with the paperwork at the bank, he ran back to the pub because he wanted to find the man who sat next to him to thank him for somehow knowing the bank job would be open again. You're crying already. I'm going to cry. <laughs> but when he got back, the man was gone. He asked the bartender, did you know the man who was sitting next to me? I need, I need to find him. And the bartender said, I don't know what you're talking about. There I hasn't thought, been anybody sitting next to you. But, sorry. That's exactly right. <laughs> that's exactly right. I thought you were crazy because you were talking to yourself the whole time. No. My great grandpa was totally confused as he walked home. My family is convinced that that bank job saved him and his family. And so also my mom, my siblings and me. My Irish Catholic family thinks the <gasps> mysterious man was an angel, but I don't know. Friendly ghost seems more likely to me. Stay sexy and always do what your friendly pub ghost tells you to do. Bridget. Can I say, Bridget, what I think it was? Yes. Because in the Great Depression and the crash of 1929, all those bankers killed themselves. Uh -huh. And I bet you as a fucking banker from that bank. Mm -hmm. And it's the reason one of the jobs was open. <laughs> And he fucking went there. It was his job. It was that his they were job or his bank. He because why would he even be in there, that bank or know or haunt that bank? <gasps> Ugh, I love it. Scary. I love it. Yeah. I should have saved that one for last. <laughs> Shit. Sorry. No, because there's this one. Okay, go. There, Because these are all so good. I know. Good job, Stephen. Good job picking those, Stephen. Stephen, you did it. Steven hasn't been here for 25 why are you, years. Why are you talking to yourself, Georgia? This is no... Now, what's that voice? Now I'm Foghorn Leghorn all of a sudden. We've gone completely away from a, an old miner. Okay. Um, a ghost strangled my boyfriend and I puked. <laughs> <laughs> That's the subject line. Enough said. Uh, I once threw up a whole cranberry and chicken salad in a packed restaurant because of a ghost. Here's what led up to that shining moment. Shit. About five months before the vomit in incident, I was sleeping in my boyfriend's room. His room was always brightly lit from an obnoxious street light that shone in through his window like a floodlight. Oh, fuck that shit. Uh, around four... No shades in your town? Yeah. Um, around 4.15 a.m., I woke to the sound of my boyfriend yelling, no, no, and struggling in his bed. I looked over, and straddling his chest was a man in full Air Force attire. Oh, my God. Which looked old-fashioned and retro, with both hands around my boyfriend's neck, throttling him as my boyfriend appeared to struggle and yell. I started screaming at the top of my lungs and bolted out the front door to run and get help. This was the mid-90s, no cell phones for us early murderinos. Uh -huh. My boyfriend ran down the street after me, shouting at me to stop and telling me... <laughs> it says mansplaining in parentheses. <laughs> it's not mansplaining. Um, that I must have had a nightmare. Bullshit. I know what I saw, <sighs> and I definitely wasn't dreaming. I refused to ever sleep in his house again. For the next several days, I was so rattled that I would shake every time I thought of what happened. Oh, my God. That's post-traumatic stress disorder. Huh. Um, fast forward five months later, and we were in a new restaurant in town, which had vintage photos post all over the place. <gasps> After lunch, we walked around and took a look at some of these pictures. After a little while, my boyfriend said, look, it's a picture of my house. In <gasps> addition to the framed photo no, no, of no, the no. house. Yes, get ready. There was also an inset picture of the soldier who used to live in that house and who had apparently died in World War II. It was the fucking man no. ghost that strangled my boyfriend months prior. I shit you not. He used to live in that house before he was killed. It gave me such a shock that I threw up oh my, my entire God. lunch right then and there and I ran out of the restaurant and had a major panic attack. Oh my God. It was a small town scene that people like to gossip about. The moral of the story is bring your barf bag with you after you've seen a ghost try to kill your boyfriend Holy just to be shit. safe. Holy shit. SSDGM ladies, low, low. What oh, the fuck? I love it. How satisfying to actually yeah. see it be, it, that's like something out of a movie. And then, you know, it's so much more satisfying than like that, her being like, that's him. That, and trying to explain it is just vomiting. Like, <laughs> that's like, there's like the best way to get anything across is be like, I'm, I am so freaked out that I vomited. Like, that's not something like, baby, remember I was telling you about that guy? No. <laughs> yes. That's, like, that's, like, you it, can't argue that. No, it wasn't a dream. Yeah. Because of the worst dreams you've ever had, you've never projectile vomited no. because of seeing a picture. You can't mansplain projectile vomiting <laughs> the idea that she's running up yes, the street out of the house screaming and he's trying to say don't do this anymore and it's mansplaining <laughs> amazing um one more yes you got okay. one elvis is i, I don't want to stop 
With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step -step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and, and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need. Break out of your dinnerette and make deliciousness part of every week with HelloFresh. I love that even though HelloFresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward, you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself. And that instead of just ordering takeout, I'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just, it feels good. So for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Murder80 and enter Murder80. It's like receiving eight meals for free only at HelloFresh.com slash Murder80, promo code Murder80. Go by. Oh, this one's creepy. This one's creepy just because of like the description of the ghost. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's called a dead camper? Question <laughs> mark. Uh oh. <gasps> hey, Georgia, Karen, Stephen, and all animals. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple L's. <laughs> Huge fan of the show, and since it's October, I'm re-listening to last year's ghost stories. They put little squiggly lines. Oh. In the episode. In the event you do something similar this year, or a creepy minis minisode sometime, I hope you find this creepy too. I was born and raised in a very small town in New Hampshire, home of good old H.H. H. Holmes. Mm. Back in the early 1900s, our property was a summer camp for boys. Oh, Already terrifying. It's a whore, just the worst idea. The smells everywhere. <laughs> our houses, our house's foundation was literally built around the old swimming pool. In our front yard, the concrete from the pool was covered with stones, but as the years passed, they fell off and revealed more paint from the pool. <sighs> There was also, there's also weird things on our property, like a set of old wooden stairs built into a huge hill on just one side. No! Creepy. We had a good amount What's of land. Under there? I don't know! <laughs> and in the backyard, my dad cleared it out to create bike trails and jumps for us. Rad. Rad. <laughs> Anyways, when I was probably 12, my friend and I were riding our bikes and rode all the way down to where the clearing ended and the woods began. At the same exact time, we both came to a sudden stop and skidded off our bikes, basically staring at the woods, wondering what in the creepy ass hell we were looking at. Right at the tree line, there was a boy staring back at us who looked to be around nine years old. He was very dirty with shaggy brown hair. He was completely naked except for a shirt made out of fabric. Ew. <laughs> Other than the makeshift <laughs> shirt. Skirt. It says skirt, not shirt. Okay. Can I? <laughs> so he's naked, but he's wearing a little skirt. Yeah. Okay. Like a like a wild boy. I like that better than if he was wearing a shirt with no pants, like Porky Pig. <laughs> yeah, like naked from the waist down, little boy. That's bad. Bad. No, bad. no, 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 no. That's no. emergency situation. Skirt. Okay. Skirt. Right. Okay. Uh, Is it a grass skirt? Other than a makeshift skirt made out of fabric, so okay. probably old timey. Uh, all he had was a dog that was already running away from us. He stared at us for a good 30 seconds before gently shaking his head. I don't know if I would call it a nod. And then he ran after his dog. We both freaked out, ran back home to tell our parents who believed us enough to go and check the woods, but obviously didn't see anything. I never saw him again, but it's always stuck with me. There's always been weird things that have happened at my house. Two of my other friends from childhood have said they thought my house was creepy too. No shit. Yeah. I looked into my house as much as I could. All I really found was evidence of a wealthy businessman back in the day opening a camp that was for boys to teach them about hunting, archery, etc. No. Uh -uh. Uh, no. After that, I can't find anything else. I even worked with my town's historical department, but hey, uh, but they can't find much. Mm. I even worked with my town's historical department, but they can't find much more either. My town is small. Everyone knows everyone and whose kids are whose. There's no missing children at the time or ever, basically. It wasn't any of my neighbors or classmates, and I've never seen that kind of dog before around town. No. I'd like to think it's a boy from the camp that either died there or ran away and died and was a, and then squiggly lines, ghost. No. Thanks for reading. Stay sexy. Don't get murdered. Katie. He was a ghost. It was a ghost. It's a little boy ghost who like but, oh, is what? living his best life, like best ghost life out in the woods. <laughs> a wild child. He's got his fucking trusty hound with him. But why is he nodding his head? 
He's just like, yep, you saw me. Oh, he was yes nodding? He said it wasn't like a yes. He said I nodded nodded his head. I don't know if I would call it a nod. Oh, shaking his head. I don't know if I would call it a nod. Shaking his head is creepy. Shaking is like stay away from mm, this forest uh-huh. or something. You're not supposed to be here. Because what if that it you know what that reminds me of is Fox Island, which is in the um upper peninsula in Michigan. Is that the Michigan killers what is it the oakland uh oakland child killer yes. and that, that was that weird connection to they started an underprivileged boys camp right. on an island where they flew kids in the kids couldn't get back off the island most of the kids were underprivileged in some way and they fucking were molesting them they and flew in sex perverts porn. to fucking just have their oh. yes and it, it like what wealthy fucking oh my god this is like it's the 40s version but right. th- back when no one would have reported anything. and it goes to the fucking town it goes to the top it goes all the way to the top oh my god and what if that wealthy businessman who started that fucking camp for boys was named h h holmes oh, it was his first pass do you have another also one? why would you build yes i do um why would you build no over a pool no 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 we saw all sorts of problems it's <laughs> foundationally and and spiritually <laughs> earthquakely earthquakely spiritually foundationally <laughs> okay wait give me one second because this one yes okay <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna read you the subject okay line. hi karen georgia Stephen, and relevant furry creatures okay all right this story takes place back when my husband and i moved into our first house in silmar a suburb of la we know it very we well we know what silmar is <laughs> don't explain don't, don't mansplain, mansplain silmar, silmar. <laughs> <laughs> we had been in a house for a few months and had just pulled together our music room. Well, well. Oh. Uh, we were jamming one night. Oh. Awesome. Hugs on guitar, me on drums with my back to the wall. Sounds- is, it, is, is this a fucking invitation to come jam? Is it a ghost email from Karen Carpenter? <laughs> um, uh, all of a sudden, he stops mid song. I think it was Misfits hybrid moment. Oh my God, wow. why are you my new best friends? <laughs> so cool. And stares intently at the wall about two feet to my right. I, of course, freak out thinking there's a bug right next to me. Yeah. Only to discover that there's a smallish bubble under the paint what? on the wall. What the fuck? Curious, it says that on the email. Curious, I poked at it with my finger and it was squishy <gasps> like there was liquid inside. Ew. We got a box cutter and cut a little hole in the bubble and a dark, thick no. liquid came oozing out <gasps> and down the wall. Your wall is bleeding. Was this blood? Sewage. We had no idea. Horrified, we left it there and immediately started calling people <laughs> to come out and investigate. A plumber came the next day and cut open the wall <gasps> Only to discover it was not blood and it was not sewage. It was uh, honey. Huh? Honey. Oh, yes. shit. <laughs> that, that's right. Inside our wall was the melting remains of a beehive and hundreds of dead bees. <gasps> Later, I put the pieces together of how it happened. Before we moved in, there were some holes in the outside wall of the house, which we asked the previous owners to patch up as a contingency of the yeah, sale. Bitch. So they did. And in doing so, they trapped the oh. hive in there. Bee murderers! We would never have known the hive was even there, except for that it was 900 degrees outside that day we were playing music. So the sun just melted the remnants inside the wall. Wow. Gross. Took days to clean out the sticky mess and quite sad to see all the those dead creatures that are so crucial to our ecosystem <laughs> it's, it's true fun fact it had the same smell like when you drive by a beer factory oh maybe the honey fermented yes. i don't know thanks for reading a big group of friends and i will be at your la show on halloween Ooh, yay see you there. can't wait stay sexy and save the bees leah oh my god is that a good one and what a bummer that they had this like free fucking source of honey yes that then they couldn't use if they'd only kept them alive they could have tapped that little bubble that's right and just had a little like like there's a little bit of asbestos paint lead paint in there yeah but yeah there is in everything don't worry about it and you're like making a warm cup of tea and then you just go down to the jam room yeah and then just what was her name? Leah. And you're like, hey, bees. And they're like, hey, Leah. Leah, what's up? What's up, Leah? Still working real hard for you. We fucking killed it last night on the drums. Oh, shit, girl. You can jam on the misfits. Girl. <laughs> These bees have the deepest voices. Yeah. What's up, girl? Oh, what's they're kind of bros because they're from Southern California. They're bros. They have backwards visors on their heads. Yeah. And they're just like, Leah, we just want to make honey and chill. That's and right. And you play music. That's right, Leah. Oh, my God. I mean, I wish we could do this all night long. Guys, keep sending us stories like this because, well, 
you know, whenever we get these ideas for send us your whatever is we pepper them in whenever they come. We just, sure. we just like read what's good. We like getting like, it's almost just like, it's like, don't mansplain us <laughs> the mini sound <laughs> and we won't mansplain it back to you. And mansplainingly yours. Stay sexy. And don't get murdered. Okay, Goodbye. Bye. Elvis, <laughs> you want a cookie? Yeah. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.